Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Check out this brand new battery right here. New budget brand offering from a brand new company, Truvalux. This battery just hit the shelves a few days ago. It is a 12.8 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery with a smart Bluetooth BMS. So we're gonna be using Bluetooth today. So if you're looking for a full test teardown interview on this new battery and brand, you found the right video. Let's get right into it. So I'm gonna run the capacity test on this battery first. So let me top it off. I previously charged it 24 hours ago. So I'm gonna make sure it is completely full. So I'll top it back off. We'll check over here on the Bluetooth and watch it charge and see the cutoff voltage. And then we'll have the indicator right here turn green once the battery is completely full. All right, the battery has completed charging. Going by the indicator light on the charger right here. So the charging cycle is complete. It stayed at 14.6 for quite a while through the whole constant voltage taper of this charger, which is a good sign. A lot of these batteries drop out due to a high cell, but this one stayed there for a while, let the charger taper all the way down. Good sign to start with. Now check the accuracy of the Bluetooth reporting from the BMS and the battery with the standalone meter. The battery Bluetooth app is showing 14.0 volts and the standalone meter is showing 14.04 volts. So I've got the Truvalux connected to the capacity test rig, the same setup I always use, the sampling shunt energy meter and the alpha inverter. Gonna test the capacity on this, see what it's got. But before I do that, I want to show you the Bluetooth right here, show you a different screen on it. So there's one page of the screen. I'll show you some more later, but the battery's at 81 degrees at the start of the test. There is the cell voltage deviations after the battery's been resting for about 10 minutes. And then click the dashboard page right there, showing state of charge 100%, charge and discharge MOSFETs are on. So 13.9 volts now, 13.9 volts right there. So pretty decent little app so far. I will let you know what I think about it as I run the capacity on this battery showing 100 amp hours available and battery health status 100%. Right, so the energy meter is clear. No energy has moved out of the Truvalux battery. So turning on the inverter now, let that stabilize. Then I'll apply the load. All right, now time to apply the load. It is a charger, so it should be around 55 amps right here load so when it stabilizes out i'll get some readings here and on the app so the load has stabilized we are at 54 amps coming out of the true Lux battery right around 700 watts and going over here to the app they've got an available time remaining right there of one hour and 52 minutes so you see how the capacity is already moving through 53 amps reporting right there 695 watts still near the start of the test still showing 97 percent state of charge through the app just want to show you another page right here, the sales page again. So look at the cell deviation right there. Not very much deviation at all with the battery loaded. Battery's at 81.7 degrees right now. So decent little app right there. And let's see what the about page has on here. So they got some advanced settings, uh, history, things like that. So let's see what's in advanced settings. Uh, password, hmm. I did not see anything about a password. So maybe can't access those without previous approval from the manufacturer. And then on the about page under the history tab, this is pretty cool right here. It shows you a track of the voltage and things, the current. Uh, yeah, that's that's pretty slick right there. So they got, let's see what else they got right here. State of charge percentage. Let's scroll over here. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Look at the capacity and then, yeah, that's, uh, that's a pretty neat little app. Then we also have a battery events tab right there showing different voltages and things. So, uh, you know, pack full of features on the app. About to cross the halfway capacity mark, estimated capacity mark, there we went 640 watt hours, I have a potential 1280, so about halfway there. And the Bluetooth showing 51% state of charge. About to reach the rated capacity on the Truvalux battery. So there we went, rated 1280 and 1280 delivered as of right now. Bluetooth showing 1% state of charge remaining. Want to make a note about the Bluetooth on the Truvalux. You can see I've burnt through 28 watt hours since that last scene on the Truvalux. And the Bluetooth is still showing 1% state of charge and one and a half amp hours capacity. So it appears that the app has a little bug right there and doesn't track all the way down to zero. So we'll see what happens as I completely discharge the battery. The voltage is starting to crash off on the Truvalux. So I'll record it live until we shut down either on the inverter low voltage or BMS disconnect. Making note, the BMS Bluetooth display just switched over to 0% state of charge at 1330 watt hours.
All right, the inverter went off on low voltage. So it looks like the tally on the Truvalux is 1,333 watt hours, just a touch over 104 amp hours on the Truvalux. And then there's the Bluetooth. Then immediately recording the cell voltages after the inverter low voltage disconnect. So we ended up with 1,333 watt hours divided out by a nominal 12.8 volts. What was our tally? 104.14 amp hours. Pretty good. It's always nice to have a 4% bonus on these 100 amp hour batteries. So if you decided to purchase one of these Truvalux Group 24 format batteries, what would you get? Well, of course you get the battery with a smart Bluetooth BMS app support right there so you can monitor and check the battery. The battery comes with two sets of terminal bolts, longs, and shorts. You get a user manual that shows you the safe use operation and specifications for the battery itself. You have a after sales service card in case you run into any kind of warranty issue or have any problems. In the unlikely event that that happens, they tell you how to contact them and how to resolve the problem. You also get a welcome card. They want you to share your thoughts, give them a review, and they will give you a small discount on your next purchase. And they also give you a quick start guide to show quick setup and operation of the battery and a warning not to use for motorcycle starting or car engine starting. And a couple of things of note in the manual before the teardown portion of the video. Rated capacity 100 amp hours grade A cells right there. And it looks like we do have low temp charge protection. So that'll be nice to see if we actually have that. So here's your specs too. So you can look at this if it interests you. And here are the actual dimensions for the Group 24 battery. So there's just some dimensions right there if you need to measure and see if it'll fit in your space. And another item of note in the manual, this battery has a multi-position mounting angles. That's always nice to see that you can mount the battery in different orientations. Looks like the only restricted orientation would be to lay it face down with the front logo here laying down or at an angle, but any other position is acceptable. So that's always good to see. And then the battery is also being offered with a five-year comprehensive warranty. They're gonna give you expert tech support if you require and a one-hour response guarantee if you have any issues. And the warranty only applies to purchases made through Amazon.com. And one last look at the case of the battery before I do the teardown. As you can see, we have nice handles on the top. Pretty rigid right there. Plastic seems to be of high quality. Pretty thick plastic. Handles seem decent. They have brass terminals on this battery right here. And we have a decal and branding on the front. A nice thick decal on the plastic. A QC pass sticker right there. Then on the back, another nice thick decal and 12 or 8 watt hours capacity there are the qr codes to download the app to use the bluetooth for this battery and showing the continuous current of 100 amps with the peak of 130 on the back five-year warranty and then some safety precautions right here and a contact all right i got the cover most of the way off so i always like to try to look at it at the same time that you are so i'll save that last little bit of glue right there so there we go there's what it looks like so immediately looking at the battery, it's pretty clean construction, very neat and orderly. And let's see for wire sizes what we got. We have two eight gauge 200 degree silicone jacketed for the negative lead. And that is, looks like a six gauge for the positive lead. Yes, it is, it's a six gauge 200 degree jacketed cable as well. And let's check the connections right here, super tight. That's good to see. And we got some inspection marks right there where somebody torqued it and checked it. Somebody had their hands on it right there. Hydraulic crimp connections. That's good to see. And looking down on the BMS right here, you see the nice piece of foam on top to help hold it down. It is secured or glued down to the epoxy board right there on top of the cells. I'll look at that a little closer in just a minute. Checking all the connections right there. Nothing is moving on that board. So good snug connections. I always like to see that. You can see we have a temperature sensor going down to the cell pack somewhere and then our balance sensing lead connection right there. And I will note that this is a Truvalux branded BMS right there. But if you were looking on the Bluetooth, you see that it was a DP04S and they changed the model to a DB04 and a BF04S. It looks like a rebranded or re-stickered JBD, Jabediah BMS. So trying to show you this, what I'm talking about, you can see the Truvalux board model number right here, DB04S, and see over here on their Bluetooth, DP04S. That is a JBD number right there. So 
Uh, I guess they just re-stickered a JBD Smart BMS is my assumption. So I'm trying to be completely transparent, show you everything that I'm seeing and noticing. But regardless, that is a good BMS, widely used in many batteries from many manufacturers. You know, very reliable, very sensitive uh, BMS, easily programmable, things like that. So I do like seeing that board. Just making sure they didn't cover up a JBD sticker. Could just even be a custom contract uh, unit from JBD BMS as far Trooper looks. That's usually how it works. If we look down into the case of the battery, you can see they've got high density foam on either side. It is a modular cell group assembly, which is becoming more widespread and more common. So I like seeing that too. And there is a little better shot of the foam. So just trying to show you everything as I'm doing it. And they had a little bit of glue down on the bottom holding in some silicone type sealant, but uh, you know, a couple of pops and it, it came out. So. So there is the complete assembly out of its case. It was sitting just like that. Main negative is snug and secure. Main positive is snug and secure. And this epoxy board was glued down to the top of the balance leads, plus it had some fiber tape uh, in there holding all that down. And I always like seeing the balance and sensing leads in this wire loom. See how they use the modular assembly and hold everything down nice and neat. Very clean looking laser welds on this one. Very complete laser welds. Looks pretty good so far. And if you look right here beside the main positive, there's our NTC temperature sensor coming down from the board. And they have it glued down right there beside the positive terminal and is in contact with the cells. So that's good too. And the BMS is secured to the side of the cells right here on this epoxy separator board right here. And there is silicone sealant right there. And underneath there is a section of double-sided foam tape. So it's on there pretty good. So I'm pulling part of the modular cell assembly apart so I can access this QR code right here. So hopefully this kind of shows you how these cell assemblies work. They got all these snap tabs. It gives proper spacing between each cell. A lot of manufacturers are starting to go to this. A close up of the data on the QR code on the cell right there. So I'm going to put it through a QR code scanner and see what kind of information I can find. So as you can see from that QR code scan, it's an unknown vendor for the cells that are in this battery. I'll do some more digging uh, during the editing of this video. If I find any other information or the manufacturer, I'll include it in a slide. I don't see an indication of used cells or anything like that, and they're claiming grade A. So I mean, they, they appear nice. I don't see, uh, see anything to indicate otherwise at this point in time. And all the balance and sense leak connections are machine screw connected and secured down with some sealant on top of that. So no worry about anything moving there. And I'm going to show you something on the side of the BMS right here. If you look in between the heat sink and the board, you can see sandwiched in there that little white lead right there. The sets leads going to that switch. That is a high temp thermal switch. So the BMS has high temp thermal protection for overload conditions and overheating conditions. That's always good to see. So the sensor, NTC sensor for high and low temp charge protection was glued down with apparently hot glue on this one instead of silicone sealant. So that's a little bit different, but that's just perfectly fine. It's actually more secure than the silicone based sealant. So let me get this out of this loom and we'll do a high and low temp protection test. So now time to check for high and low temp charge protection on this battery. I've got the Bluetooth app pulled up right here so we can see our temperature sensor, see what kind of triggers or indicators we get on the app itself. I've got the power supply right here charging the battery. So we have functioning high and low temp protection during this test. Either trigger should drop this current out to zero and we should have some kind of indication over here on the Bluetooth app. So I will do high temp charge protection first. I'll apply heat to the sensor. That went pretty quick. As you can see the temperature over here where it climbed. Let's see what the dashboard display is showing right here. It does not work with gloves on on that iPad. So you see the charging is off right there. So we'll cool it back down and get it back to charging. So you can see the sensor right there, 191 degrees Fahrenheit. So quite toasty. So I'm glad to see that work. Cool this back down and see where we trigger back to charging at. So around 130 degrees Fahrenheit indicated 
by the Bluetooth app, we went back to charging. Now I'll apply an ice pack to the sensor to check for low temperature charging protection. Watch the display right there on the power supply and watch the temp on the Bluetooth over there. All right, we're below freezing now. All right, that was very quick. Wow. I think that's the fastest low temp trigger I've ever seen. I mean, that was matters of a couple of seconds. So, wow. Yeah, that works good. Work back up and get back to charging. All right, right at 40 degrees, it came back on charging. Excellent. So I'm gonna share my final thoughts on the Truvalux Group 24 Smart Bluetooth Lithium Iron Phosphate Battery. If you saw what I saw during the video, pretty high quality build. Not really anything to knock this battery on. Everything's adequate, wire size is adequate, protections are there. You know, good build quality, good modular construction, good BMS, got the Bluetooth. Uh, nothing to complain about on this one. So Truvalux being a new brand and this being their first release for the U.S. market, uh, pretty impressed by their build quality. I hope they maintain this build quality as the company ages. So, you know, initial batch, initial build, yeah, that's good. I like it. So they could become a major player in the budget category if they keep offering batteries built like this. So what do you think about this new Truvalux Group 24 battery? Is this something you'd be interested in or something you could use? Could you figure out a use case scenario to use this size format battery? Please let me know in the comment section down below. And also, if you're interested in looking further into this battery or possibly purchasing this battery, I'll provide a convenient link in the video description down below so you can easily find the battery, check current pricing, and I'll also include the current price at time of filming in the video description for your reference. And if you have any other questions about this battery or the app or how to use the app or anything like that, just let me know in the comments and I'll try to answer and help you to the best of my abilities. So I hope you enjoyed the video today. Thank you for watching. Y'all take care. Be safe. I will see you on the next one. Special thanks to Truvalux for providing this battery sample for today's video so I could test and demonstrate your battery. Thank you.